Hello there. Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today, I want to bring more clarity on when to watch the news. I call it five clues to know when to watch the news. So what I want to do is just kind of talk about that because, you know, it's on all the time, 24 hours. So if we just kind of sit there staring at it all the time, chances are that may not be certain. So here is the first clue about when we should watch the news. How about this? When it's new. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Sometimes someone will bring on a subject or a story and then they'll kind of recycle that story and they'll interview somebody about that story. And they'll have two people coming on talking about that story. But it's no longer new. We kind of know what's going on. We want to be informed. This isn't about sticking our head in the sand and not caring about anything. But if it's no longer new and we just keep hearing the same thing recycled in order to keep us connected to this particular channel, maybe it's not serving us. Number two, is it really helpful? You know, is it really helping us create the life we want? Maybe learning about one particular thing is a good idea, but do we need to keep hearing it? Now, if there's like a storm coming up the Gulf or in the tropics and we need to kind of track that and keep, keep track of that because that is helpful information, that's a different story. But often what we hear on the news isn't really new and it's not really helpful. Number three, is it designed to inflame? News folks have recognized that when they've got a 24 hour news channel and they don't have news to fill 24 hours, they've got to find a way to keep people connected and viewing hooked to some degree. And so what they often do is they present information designed to kind of trigger a certain part of the brain. For those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know we got these three parts of the brain. Lower part of the brain is called the brain stem. That is the fight or flight part. Upper 80% of the brain is the neocortex. This is where we make our best decisions. I call this the top of the mind. This middle brain limbic system is very interesting because it is the scanner processor router part of the brain. It scans incoming data and then either routes it down to the brain stem or up to the upper 80% of the brain. So here's the deal. The mission on the planet of this middle brain is to keep us alive as a species. So it's not very smart and it's working with old software. And it has a tendency to interpret almost anything negative as dangerous and throws us into the part of the brain that's designed to deal with danger. This is where we get triggered. This is where we get angry. This is where we get frustrated. This is where we get worried. So we don't want to trust this middle brain and this lower brain, this unconscious part of the brain, to determine whether or not this is something we want to keep doing over and over and over. Once we've made a decision, is it still new? Is it still helpful? And is it designed to inflame? Do have, they have two people on there and one of them represents the far right and one of the left represents the far left and they're just kind of debating, arguing with each other about who's right. Is that really helpful? Is that really, or is that designed to inflame? If it's designed to inflame, we don't want to give them that ability to trick us or manipulate us. Again, number four, does it really trigger the kind of chemicals, thoughts that we want to trigger? Does it trigger our anger, our frustration, our resentment, our anxiety? If so, that is not good. Because for those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know these actually trigger certain chemicals in our body, mostly adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol. These chemicals are great in a fight or fight situation, but when they keep being triggered over and over and over because we're watching news designed to trigger that, we're kind of messing with our blood pressure and we're messing with our heart rate. It actually minimizes our ability to fight off illness. It minimizes our immune system. It shortens our life long term because it's called chronic stress. You know, acutely re reacting that way is great in a fight or flight situation, but when that becomes a lifestyle or when we just sit there and be triggered over and over and over and over, that's not good for us, so it's not serving us. The fifth one I really love, would we really recommend this to someone we love? Would we recommend, hey, come on in, let's watch this over and over and over and over? Probably not, you know? We watch something, we become informed, we got it, we don't need to watch it anymore. Why don't we make decisions about watching the news? Hey, is it new? Is it helpful? Is it designed to inflame? Is it triggering chemicals we really don't want? And would we recommend it to someone we love? If the answer to that is no, let's turn our attention, our mind, to creating things that are more meaningful, that we would recommend to someone we love, that access this upper 80% of the brain. Something that we would say, hey, come join me to someone we love. 
This is what I get to do. I get to go around the world teaching people how to access this upper 80% of the brain. This is where we make our best decisions. This is the executive function decision-making part of the brain. And it's not just the logical part of the brain. It certainly is logical, but it's also where we connect with our compassion and our love and our joy and our ability to really make the most of life. So if you would like me to come to your organization, your school, you, and teach you how to access this upper 80% of the brain, that's what I teach. I have a model that actually spells brain, that shows people how to shift from this resistant, lower reactive brain to this proactive brain. Then I show you how to stay there, how to rewire the brain. So this new perspective of living in the top of the mind starts to become a new habit. Then I show you when you're dealing with difficult people, people who are upset with you or not listening to you, how do you engage them so that they shift from their resistant brain to their receptive brain so they truly hear and understand what you're wanting them to know? Again, if this is something you would like me to do with your organization, your school, you feel free to, to go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com or just Google Bill Crawford PhD. I'll come up on the first page. Hit the contact button. Let me know what you're interested in. Love to talk with you. In the meantime, here's to you bringing more clarity about when you sit in front of that TV watching the news, more confidence and creativity in your ability to make decisions about when to do it, when not to do it, more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the future.